All right then, gang, so I think we know enough now, hopefully, about PHP to move on to something that I think is a little more fun, functions. It's even in the name, function, all right? So what are functions? Well, basically, they are blocks of code that can be executed to do something or other. So you can think of them as some kind of black box. Something goes in and something else comes out. Now, inside the black box, we have a block of code that runs in order to produce some kind of output or do something. And we can call or invoke this function whenever we want, however many times we want as well. And that's good because it means we only ever have to write the function code once and then we call it to run it however many times that we want to, okay? Now we've actually been invoking some functions already so far in this course. For example, we've seen this one, string to upper, and that expects an input of some kind of string, which might be lowercase, then we pass that into the function, the function performs its magic, runs some code, and spits out an output, which is an uppercase string. It takes this and it turns it to uppercase, right? So that's an inbuilt PHP function, and there's many different inbuilt PHP functions that we can use. We've seen a handful of them, but we can also create our own functions. For example, say we want a function that is gonna format a particular product or a series of different products. Then we could create a format product function. And that function would expect us to send in as an input, as an argument to the function, this product variable right here. So we send that in as an input, the function runs its code and spits out this output, which is a string like the green shell or whatever the product name is, costs X amount of money. So that is performing some kind of function and we can call this function as many times as we want, five, 10, 20 times, depending on how many different products we have. And we're gonna get a similar kind of output, the same formatted output every time, okay? So that's the whole idea behind functions. We create this block of code, give it a name, and then we can call that function or invoke that function at any point in time to perform that bit of code. All right then, so now let's give this a whirl. Let's try creating our own functions. So the first step is to use the function keyword. That tells PHP that, look, we're creating a function here. And now we give this function a name. Just like we give a variable a name, we're gonna give the function a name. So I'm gonna call this say hello. And notice I've used camel case here because I've got two words, but you could also use underscores if you want to as well. I'm opting for camel case. Then we open and close parentheses and that is our function name, say hello with parentheses. Okay, so now we have to write the code that we want to run when this function is called or invoked. So we do that inside a code block. So open up your curly braces for this code block and then write the code that's gonna execute. So I'm gonna say echo and good morning, Yoshi, something like that. So very simple for now. So that is our function declared right there. We've given the function a name and we've said what code we want to run inside the code block whenever this function is called. Now, if I was to save this and run it over here, nothing is gonna happen, okay? We've declared the function, but we're not actually calling the function. So this is not actually gonna run until we call or invoke the function. And the way we invoke a function is by just saying the function name, say hello, and parentheses. That there is gonna tell PHP to find this function and run it, okay? So now we should see this in the browser. Let's refresh over here, and now we see it, awesome. Cool. So you know like in the past when we've run a function like string to upper, we've passed in an argument right here, a string of some kind. Well, we can pass in an argument to our own functions as well. So say I want to pass in the name so that this is the actual name I pass in instead of just Yoshi. So I could pass in, for example, Mario right there. Now, if I save this and run this, then this isn't gonna work. It's still gonna output Yoshi because we've not said, okay, we expect some kind of argument here or parameter in this function and we want to use it. So we need to, first of all, specify that we're gonna expect this value over here. So we pass this argument in and we declare that parameter right here and we give that parameter a name. So I'm gonna call this dollar sign name. So it's basically a little variable a local one that can be used inside this function. So when we pass this in and we call the function, it fills this variable with this value, okay? And now we can use this variable with that value inside it in the function. 
So I could output that right here. I'm inside double quotes, so I can directly output the name. So save that and let's refresh in the browser. And now we can see it's replaced with Mario. Awesome, right? Cool, so that's how we can pass in arguments and specify parameters in the function declaration. Cool. Now, what if we don't pass in a name? Well, if we save this and run it, then it's gonna to try to output good morning name, but this doesn't really exist because we've not passed anything in. So this is null, it's not been assigned a value yet. If we refresh, then we're gonna get some kind of error. It says too few arguments to functions say hello. Zero passed in, but one is expected, okay? So what we could do is give this a default value so that if a name is not passed in, then it's gonna take the default value. So I could set this equal to Sean, for example, and then if I save this, if we run it again, it's gonna call a function. I'm not passing in a value here, so it's gonna say, well, I've not received one, so I'll set name equal to this default value right here. So let's save that and refresh, and now we can see good morning, Sean. If I was to pass in Mario again, then it's gonna override this value over here, this default value, and we should see Mario instead. So refresh, and we see Mario, awesome. Okay then, so that's a simple example. If we wanna do something more complex, we can do. I'm gonna create another function right now, and I'm gonna call this format product. And this function is gonna be responsible for taking in a product variable, which might have a name and a price, and it's gonna output some kind of sentence about that product. So I'm gonna take in a parameter, product, I'm expecting that to be passed in, okay? And then inside the function, what do I want to do? Well, first of all, I just want to echo, and I'm gonna echo a string. Double quotes, because we're gonna output some kind of variable. Now, I'm gonna output the product, but I want the name from that product. So square brackets, and then name like this. Now, when we're outputting variables inside a string like this, it's fine if we're just outputting a single value like that, but if we're using square brackets to get a property from a value, it's not gonna understand this, okay? When we do something like this, we need to wrap the whole variable inside curly braces like that. Now it does understand this. It says everything inside these curly braces is gonna be some kind of variable, okay? So that's just a little caveat you need to watch out for. So anyway, we've got the product name now, and we're gonna say that that costs a certain amount of pounds, so we'll do a pound sign first of all, then again in curly braces, we're gonna go for the product, and then we want the price, okay? Now another way to do all this, to output the variables, would be to use just quotes and concatenating the quotes together with the variables, but I think sometimes it's easier to output the variables directly inside the string using this kind of syntax, okay? So anyway, we're echoing that to the browser. In fact, we'll add on here to buy, and then we'll do a BR tag at the end so it goes to a new line if we format another product. So it's gonna say the product name costs a certain amount of pounds to buy, and then new line, okay? So we've created that function. Now let's call that function. So I'm gonna say format product, and we need to pass in some kind of variable which has a name, value and also a price value. So we need to pass in an associative array, okay? So in the parentheses, we'll pass in an associative array. And the first value of that array is gonna be the name, and that is gonna be equal to gold star. And the second value is gonna be the price, and that is gonna be equal to 20, okay? So let's see if this works. Now we're calling or invoking that function. We're passing in this product right here. Then we're outputting that product right here. So let's see if this works. So refresh, and we can see the gold star costs 20 pounds to buy. I'm just going to comment this out for now because we don't want to use this function anymore. Refresh again, and we can see that right there. Cool. All right then, so at the minute, our functions are just echoing things out. But a lot of the times, we want a function to return a value to us. So to do that, we could use the return keyword, and this will all make sense in a minute. So what I'm gonna do is return instead a value. And I'm still gonna return this thing over here, the same value, the same formatted product as a string, but instead of echoing it out this time, I'm returning it. 
So if we say format product and pass something in, then instead of it echoing directly, it's just gonna say, okay, I'm running this code and then I'm gonna pass this value back to you. Now, since it's passing the value back to this call, what we need to do is store that value in some kind of variable. So I could say dollar sign formatted, that's what I'm calling my variable, is equal to this. So we run that function and whatever value is returned to us is stored in this variable now. Does that make sense? So I could now equally just say echo formatted. And don't forget to add on your dollar sign at the start, not percentage, dollar, save that, refresh, and we still get the same result. Now you might be thinking, what's the point in this? Well, sometimes we don't always want to directly echo something out. Sometimes it might be some kind of mathematical um, formula that we're executing in here or doing something to a user object, and we don't always want to echo it out to the browser. We sometimes want to just take that value and store it in a variable, which we can then use later on, okay? So that's the reasoning behind it. So I wanna show you one more thing when it comes to functions, and that's passing in multiple different arguments right here and accepting multiple different parameters. So let me just comment this stuff out for now and come back up here. And what I'm gonna do is specify that we want to also accept another parameter here, and that is gonna be called the time. So we comma separate them, the first one, then the second one. Now we can give this a default value if we want to. We don't have to, but we can do. I'm gonna set the default to be morning just in case something is not passed in. And instead of morning here, I'm gonna output the time, okay? So if we did not pass any parameters or any arguments rather into the call of the function, then it would use these two default values in this. Let's just give this a whirl. I'm gonna say, say hello without passing anything in. Save that and refresh over here. And we see good morning, Sean. Now, if I pass in a name, first of all, to be Yoshi, and then the time, which is gonna be night, then that should override these two. If we refresh, we see good night, Yoshi. Okay then, cool. So there we go, my friends. That is functions in a nutshell for you.